Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be using Inkscape, a powerful free and open source vector graphics editor. If you're new to Inkscape and want to learn how to download and have a quick run through of some of the tools available to you, click on the link in the top right hand corner and watch the Inkscape Basics video. In today's video, we're going to look at a few options that are available with the selection tool. We're going to look at rotating an object by 90 degrees. We can do this either clockwise or anti-clockwise. We're going to look at flipping a selected object vertically or horizontally. We're also going to look at how we can order our objects. So as we build up an image, we can adjust which order the objects are arranged on the page. And we're going to look at a couple of scaling options. We're also going to look at Boolean operators for combining our shapes and paths. So the first tool I want to take a look at is our rotation and flip tools which are available to us when we have our selection tool, which is the arrow at the top left-hand side of your screen. Um, I've made up a little man. He's just made out of predefined shapes, so I've just used rectangles and ellipses, and I've joined them together using Union, which we'll be covering shortly. Um, if we select him by clicking on him, we can use the rotation and flip tools at the top here. So we can rotate by 90 degrees. We can do this anti-clockwise. Or we can do it clockwise. And we have the flip tools. So we can flip uh, horizontally. And we can also flip vertically. Next along the line, we have these tools which when we build up a picture we we'll get several objects all stacked on top of each other and we can change the order by moving them up and down the stack using these ones. Um, I've got a few predefined shapes that I've already made so like I say these are just predefined shapes that I've drawn. So when we put them on the page you can see they're stacked on top of each other. If we want to change the order in which they're stacked, we can go up and use these tools at the top. We can either, let's move it up a little bit so we can see. So the first one is drop it to the bottom of the stack. So if we click on that one, it drops it right to the back. We can then move it back up either by using the uh, tool on the right hand side, which takes it to the top of the stack, or we can step them up and down one layer at a time. So we can take it take it back that way. Back up. Um, another thing we can do with our objects is group them. Once you've grouped objects together they kind of behave like one object. So you can scale them together, you can move them about together. So to group objects we can either click off and drag a box oops, sorry, drag a box over the top of the objects we want to select or we can select one then holding the shift key down we can select other objects and we can deselect them so once we've got the objects we want to group together selected we can go up to the top here and we've got um, group objects and we've got ungroup objects so we click on group objects and as you can see the boundary box has now gone around both shapes so we can scale these together if we click on them we can rotate them we can move them and if we want to take them apart again then we can ungroup and then they're two separate objects again oh sorry they're both selected so they both move as one so if we click off and then click back on we can move one independently and the other independently. Um, when we group objects, the objects have to be next to each other. So for example, if we take the square and the triangle, so we've got the triangle already selected, so if I hold down shift and select the square, when we group these, they put them next to each other, so they get brought forwards and put together. So let's, sorry, let's go to the group and we group them and the square gets brought forwards so they're next to each other. Um, it doesn't matter which way around you select them, they'll always get brought forwards to the to the, 
the uh, front object and select it that way. They stay in the same order, so the square is still behind the triangle, but they're next door to each other now. Just bear that in mind if you're making up a complex um, picture using lots of lots of objects and paths. If you group ones that are set apart, it may affect the appearance of your picture, so just be aware of that. So the next tools I want to look at are these scaling options we've got at the top here. Um, if we open up our square, you can see I've got a stroked path around the outside, which gives me a nice black outline. Now we can either scale this when we scale our object, so if we click on it, the, at the moment the stroke scales with the size of the object. So as I make the object bigger, the line around the outside gets bigger. If we turn this off, when we scale our object, the line will stay the same width. So as we bring it down, it looks like it's scaling, but when we release it, it will recalculate. So there we go, it's sized the line back to the original size. Or the, the stroke, sorry, back to the original size. If we turn it back on, as we drag it out, it will, it will scale with the size of the shape. So the next tool I want to take a look at is the second one along, which is uh, scaling radius of the corners with the object. For this, I'm going to get rid of this one because this, let's lose that. We're going to go over to our rectangle tool and we are just going to draw ourselves a nice rectangle. If you watched the previous video, you'll remember that we have two square handles, which we can just use to manipulate the shape of our rectangle. And we have a round handle, which you can round corners with. So if we round the corner, then we're gonna to go to our select tool to get our scaling options. As we scale our object, at the moment it scales the radius with the object, so as we make the object bigger, the radius of the corner scales. But if we turn that off, the radius should stay the same. So we scale it up and when we release, the radius should change back to its original size. There we go. So it's no longer in proportion to what it was before. So the last thing I wanna take a look at in this video are the Boolean operators, which work on paths and shapes. You can find these if you go up to path at the top, click on path, you've got all your different options available down here. So the first one we're gonna look at is union. This takes two shapes, joins them together to form one shape. So if we select both of our objects, we can drag a box over. So now we've got the two objects selected. We're gonna go up to path, down to union, click on union, and that creates a single shape. If we go, just use our nodes tool, we can see that the path goes around the outside. These are no longer predefined shapes. These are now a path. So if you move a node, it warps the shape as it would with a path. So if we just back step a couple of times to get back our two, two shapes, the next one I want to take a look at is difference. This one, we're going to chop a chunk out of our square using our circle as a tool. So the circle needs to be on top. We're going to select both of them. So we drag a box over so they're both selected. Now if we go up to path, difference. It chops a chunk out. The circle disappears completely, uh, just leaving the cutout or the square with the cutout corner. Um, so we're back step to get our shapes back. If we wanted it to do it the other way around, so we wanted to use the square to chop a, a corner out of the circle, then what we'd need to do is put them in reverse order. So if we go up to our select tool again, we're just going to drop the circle to the bottom. So we're going to use the square. So we're going to put that on top of the circle so we can cut a corner out there. So we select both of them. We go up, path, difference. Now it chops the corner out of the circle. 
So if we just back step with Control Z, get our shapes back. The next one we want to look at is intersection. So as we can see from the symbol, it takes the two shapes and just leaves the overlap in the middle. So if we go up to, oh, sorry, we need to select them. Let's select them. Go up to path. Sorry, go up to path, intersection. Again, because the circle is at the bottom, we end up with the color of the circle, but it's just the intersection between the two shapes. Next one is exclusion, does the opposite. This time it just removes the, the center section. So if we select both of them again, I'm gonna go up to path, exclusion, and it's just removed any intersection between them. And again, the square takes on the color of the circle because the circle was the one that was getting worked on, or is the one at the bottom. After circle, we've got division. This one works a little bit different. What happens, I think we just demonstrate it and then we can, so we've got to path, division. This uses the top shape to cut the bottom shape into sections. So we click off, click on, and then we've got two separate shapes. So it's literally cut along the path of the second shape. Sorry, just back step, get back to the square. The next one's cut path. So if we select both of them again, we go up to path, cut path. Now what's happened is we have our path that goes around the circle, but this time rather than cutting it into two separate shapes, it's literally just sliced the path. So if we click off and click on this, we can drag it away so we can see We've literally just got the section of the original path. It hasn't put in new lines for the shape, you know, new edges for the shape. It's literally just sliced through the, the path. The next two tools work slightly differently. These, the first one combine, takes the two shapes and combine the, uh, combines them together. So the two paths are combined to create one object. So... If we go up to path, oh sorry, we need to select them, don't we? Let's select them. If we go up to path, combine. Now when we move them around, they've actually combined into one object. If we want to take these apart again, we can use the break apart. Break apart works on objects that are made up of a selection of individual paths. So this one's, sorry, let's get our selection tool. So this one is one object that's made up of two individual paths. So we can break those apart again by using break apart. So we've got it selected, go up to paths, break apart. And that separates out, that separates out the two objects again. As you can see, it's kept the same colors as it was when it was combined. I think we've covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we're going to use what we've learned in the previous two videos to create a, a simple vector graphic of an owl similar to this one. I'll see you next time.